If you ever wanted to make homemade puff pastry but were too intimidated to try, then you've got to check out my homemade puff pastry recipe. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. This puff pastry will be ready in two shakes of a lamb's tail, plus a little bit. So let's get started. First off, we're going to measure out the dry ingredients, starting with two cups or 240 grams of all-purpose flour. Perfect. To which we're adding half a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of granulated sugar. You don't need that much. Our scale is done. We're going to whisk this up and then grab the butter, and boy do I have something to say about that butter. We're gonna freeze our butter for at least 10 minutes. We want it to be ice cold, like ice, ice, ice. Second of all, if you use an American butter, it's delicious, but it actually has a fairly high water content in there, so it's not pure fat. It's just a little bit of milk solid, a little bit of the watery stuff, and this is a disaster when you're making a puff pastry. So. You're gonna use a European style butter like Kerrygold, for example. This is not an ad for a Kerrygold or any of those other butters, but when I recipe tested this with different butters, the results were drastic to the point where I had to like stop the video and just start talking about it. We're gonna grate this into our flour mixture, just like this with a cheese grater. I used to make my pastry like this. It's not the best technique for making a regular pie dough, but for this puff pastry, and it's actually a rough puff we're making, so it's a slightly easier form of puff pastry. And it starts with grating the butter. We're gonna mix it in as we go along because the butter is frozen, but it'll melt or it'll warm up instantaneously. And we just want to grate and mix and grate and mix. This recipe is my popular request. I get so many people asking for a homemade puff pastry recipe whenever I use the store-bought for something like the pastelitos or an appetizer. I'm so happy you suggested it because it's a really fun recipe to make. I know a lot of times recipes just call for puff pastry and I use store-bought puff pastry too. It's not something you need to be ashamed of. It's so convenient and easy but you can make your own at home and it's gonna be just delicious. There's only a few ingredients, there's no chemicals or stabilizers, and it's fresh. If you don't wanna take the risk, you can totally just chop up the last little bit of butter, but um, I know my cheese grater, so I'm gonna just grate all the way. There we go, every last bit's grated. Remove all that butter that's stuck to your cheese grater. I forgot to mention, if it's hot where you are, you can keep this in the freezer before you grate it and it'll help just not melt the butter. Okay, now we're gonna toss this together, just get all that butter well coated, and you can, if you feel this, it feels like cheese, it's so crazy. <laughs> but it's not, it's butter. I have some ice water here, drizzle it over. Don't just pour it all together. Just drizzle, 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 drizzle. As you go, you can mix it up with a fork a little bit. I have ice ice cold death hands, so this is like the perfect thing for me to do all day. If you run hot, if you're not a corpse, then you can just use a fork or a knife to mix in most of this or put this in the freezer to take some breaks. I'm using my fork just to mix this all together. I'm gonna switch to using my hands now and just fold the mixture together. I'm kind of like pressing and sliding a little bit. It's not the same as kneading or doing a full mix. Right now, it's starting to form a loose crumble, but not quite, so I'm gonna drizzle over an additional tablespoon at a time and mix together until it really does come together a bit more. I have like one ball where the water landed, even though I was drizzling, and the rest is um, a little too crumbly. And you can let me know in the comments what you like using puff pastry for. For me, puff pastry is perfect for really easy appetizers or pastelitos de guayaba. I hope I'm not massacring that, but they're like puff pastry filled with a cream cheese mixture and guava. Ah, oh, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite treats. Holding together in a cohesive mass, it's time to wrap it after we roll it a bit. We're gonna roll this to about half an inch thick and try and make it a nice square. That's the one thing because it'll help in the next step. And when I say roll, I mean pat. <laughs> your best tools as a baker are your hands because they can really tell you what the consistency, what the resistance you're getting, how close something is to being done. And even with a rolling pin right now, it was lifting off some of the dough and it's just making a bit of a mess and I didn't wanna add more flour to this. If you want, you can roll it between some more parchment paper, a little bit of plastic, or you could flour the rolling pin if you need to. 
That looks just about right. We're gonna wrap it carefully so it doesn't dry out and pop this into the fridge, but be right back with the magic of editing. My dough is chilled, so we're gonna start rolling and folding. I'm working on a pastry mat, which lets me lift things off and make sure nothing will ever get stuck to the counter. But if you're not using one, just make sure to be a little bit more liberal than you might imagine you need to be with your flour. I'm gonna place that onto our floured surface and always move it around. Don't let it sit for too long because it'll stick. Just a little bit of flour for the top. We're gonna roll this into a rectangle. I'm gonna roll this into a rectangle. You're not helping me right now. <laughs> You'll see a little bit of cracking. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You could pinch it together. This is already such a beautiful color and I love the texture. Have I been moving it around? Nope, I forgot. So it's starting to stick already. Let's just sprinkle a little bit of flour underneath there. Now we can move it around and it's really important to do that because if it sticks, you're just gonna be sad. Okay, keep rolling it out. Now for the folding. I'm gonna fold this into thirds just like you were sending a snail mail letter out to somebody. When's the last time you did that? It's folded. I'm gonna turn this around and roll it out again. Basically, we're gonna roll and turn and fold and roll and turn and fold. That's what builds up all those amazing, beautiful layers. So we're folding in opposite directions. And as you can see, it's getting more and more supple as we work it. It's really great. So relaxing. And right now, this is the last one. We have lots of beautiful layers here. We did kind of wake up the gluten. So this needs a lot of rest time. It needs to rest for a young, young time. As my kids would say. It needs to chill for at least two hours, but really, I would do this a day ahead of time. Then you can use this puff pastry just like you would the store-bought kind, except the taste is gonna be that much more amazing. Don't even think about arguing with me on that one. I'm wrapping it, it's gonna chill one more time, and when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to bake this up and make it amazing. Once your puff pastry is all chilled up, you're going to sprinkle some flour onto your work surface, roll it out again, and bake it up. Chances are, if you're making this recipe, you're making something else. Maybe you're making pastelitos from scratch. Anyhow, I wanted to show you how this will puff up so beautifully, so we're gonna bake some up right now. Roll to almost a quarter of an inch. I'm cutting mine into rectangles. You might want circles, triangles, whatever your recipe calls for. If you look really closely, you can see all the layers in here and it hasn't even baked up. I'm so excited for this. Transfer to a lined baking sheet, pop into your oven preheated to 425 and bake until puffy, golden, and amazing. If you like this video, check out my pastry playlist. Mm. That tastes so much better than store-bought puff pastry and it was so easy too. I'll see you in the next video.